Well, I'll start it off by uh, I want to welcome everybody to the September 2017 Free Project of the Month, and this is titled Mug Rug Mania. And I have to tell you, I had a lot of fun with this project. I'm going to start off, though, with a, what is a mug rug? Because when I started quilting several years ago and somebody said, oh, I'm going to make a mug rug, I thought, what the heck is a mug rug? So a simple definition is it's a mini quilt. Now, a quilt is basically two pieces of fabric, a top and a bottom, with a piece of batting in the middle, and it's somehow stitched together. But when we look at a more detailed definition, this is a small, fun-to-create mini quilt. And they're made to look pretty on your desk. So you put them on your desktop. They're a little bit larger than a coaster smaller than a placemat, and you would put a coffee mug on there or a teacup or water or something like that, and it, it soaks up the drips and the condensation. But there's a little space for you to put on a cookie or a biscuit or something like that. So that's what a mug rug is. So when somebody defined it to me, it took me a long time to kind of embrace this. Well, why on earth would I want to make one of those? But uh, I will. I work with uh, some some customers at a local dealer, and somebody was asking me about one of our tools in the software called uh, Wordplay. And I thought, oh my gosh, this would be a perfect project for Wordplay. So this month we're going to catch mug rug mania. Now, as far as your materials go, you want to make sure that you download September's free design. Now, that's on your myfloriani.club. And when you download your free design, it also downloads the September free design and the September project handout. And I'll show you in a little bit where you can access the handout. Your design this month comes from a new collection. And you'll see here on my screen, this collection is called Culinary Cuteness. And I have to tell you, I do love this collection because we all cook. There's always things we can make for the kitchen. And we've got the holidays coming up. So we'll be doing housewarming gifts and Christmas presents and things like that. So this is a great collection for you to add to your embroidery uh, repertoire. And I love the collection primarily because these designs, uh, they stitch out really nice and fast. So they're fairly simple and they're very fast. Your free design this month is this little teacup. So this is the design that I'm giving to you. And then make sure that you print your handout. So this is a little PDF file and it's going to walk you through the materials that you need and all the different kinds of things for that. Now here's your objective. My primary objective with this month's project, believe it or not, was I want you to investigate wordplay. I love this tool. I think it's really creative and clever. And I'm a retired language arts teacher. And uh, when we were trying to teach kids about um, adjectives, we would have kids write descriptive adjectives about themselves. And then we would have them use a tool called a Wordle. And they would take these adjectives and they would put these in there and it would flash them around the page and then the kids would talk about themselves in a positive manner. So that's one of my primary objectives. My second primary objective was to have you create a project that is done entirely in the hoop. And I don't know if I've done this in this iteration, but um, this is an in the hoop project. So we're going to start and we're going to stop in the hoop. So realistically, there's no sewing with this project involved. We're going to do everything in our embroidery hoop. We're going to complete the project and assemble it successfully. And I would really encourage you, for those of you that are listening in on this and for dealers, I really encourage you when you watch these projects of the month, yeah, go through and do the lesson, but create the project. Assemble it. Because there is so much learning. You're going to learn not just about the software, but you're going to learn about the various um, Floriani stabilizing products and our threads and our needles. And I incorporate Quilter Select into these projects. So I really encourage you to assemble the materials and put the project together. And then the bonus this month is we're going to customize this project for to make it unique. And I want you to make many more. And as I was putting the project together, I think I ended up maybe making 10 or 15 of these because they're really, really fast. So I'm going to share some of my creations with you at the end of this 
uh, webinar. As far as your materials, you want to make sure you have your Floriani Total Control U software. I already mentioned your free project of the month. You want your handout, and it has a supply list, which you see here on my screen. You'll also need, this is a great project for using up those small scraps of fabric. So this is not fabric intensive. You can use small scraps of fabric, um, and, and scraps of batting, scraps of stabilizer, all those things that I don't know about you, but it's not small enough to throw away, but it's not big enough to use, so I put it aside, and the collection just keeps growing and growing. So in this project, I used up lots of scraps of fabric. As far as your materials go, you want to make sure you have Floriani wet and gone stabilizer. You'll need your Floriani embroidery thread. This is entirely up to you what uh, thread you want, and um, but for the design, you'll need these colors. So you need your Y40, you need color 672, and color 900. So those are part of the design that's given to you. You need your Floriani embroidery batting. Now you could use other batting, but I'll, it, when I talk about putting the project together, I'll talk about why I encourage you to use Floriani embroidery batting. You'll need heat and gone embroidery topping if you're going to do a satin fill design. So if you're going to um, make a unique project and you're going to grab a satin fill design, put a piece of heat and gone topping up there. You want your Floriani Dreamweave Ultra. I tried to make this project with scraps of fabric, and I thought, well, I'm not going to put Dreamweave Ultra on the back of the fabric. And I made a couple of them without the Dreamweave Ultra not happy with the results. So take the time to put Dreamweave Ultra on your fabric. This is another great project for using up those small pieces of Dreamweave Ultra because when I'm doing Dreamweave Ultra, I never throw any of it away. You'll need Floriani Chrome Needle, your embroidery needle, the 7511, and this month you'll also need a 9012, and that's to complete the project, and I'll tell you why. I think you need that later on. You may not, but I think it's a good idea. You'll need your Floriani embroidery protection tape. You'll need a ruler. I recommend the Quilter Select 6 by 12 ruler. You'll need a rotary cutter. I recommend the Quilter Select rotary cutter and then the Quilter Select wave applique scissors or applique scissors. All right, let's go ahead and open up our software. So I'm going to toggle over. I already have my software loaded. The first thing that I want to do, of course, before I can do anything, my software is loaded, but I've got to open a new document. All of my tools are grayed out, and it's really interesting. I was doing a software um, in-store training about a month ago, and it's very, very interesting. Even though you tell people when they open the software, you've got to open up a piece of paper, they'll open up the software. They don't have a piece of paper open. They look and go, something's wrong with my software. All of your tools are grayed out because you've got to open up a new document. So you're always going to come in and click on the piece of paper. And in Floriani software, I really encourage you to get in the habit of using all of the icons in here instead of the various tools. Okay, so we've got a new document open. We're going to check our grid settings. And so to do that, there's two ways to do it. The first way is if you come under your tools to your preferences and you can come over to your grid. Okay, we've done this multiple times. So I'm gonna cancel out of that one. I'm going to come over here to the ruler on the page. So you have a horizontal ruler across the top of your page, and you have a vertical ruler down the, the left-hand side. If your ruler is in millimeters, you'll see that. And so it'll say millimeters over here in the upper corner of the ruler or the lower left-hand corner of that uh, vertical ruler. Right click anywhere on there and you can quickly toggle back and forth between metric and inches. We're going to use the grid this month um, as a tool and so make sure that you have that in inches and then right click again and let's go into our grid settings. Now you may have your grid settings already set this way. Um, there's a, I think that there's a new update coming up and uh, to the software, and DJ can tell you more about that, but um, when you update your software, by default, your grid settings will go back to the default. So if you've done an update or whatever, you want to go back and check your grid settings. So under your grid settings, we're going to make sure that we're in inches. I see inches right here. 
and I'm going to set my horizontal at 0.25 and my vertical at 0.25. That is one fourth of an inch. So when you look in the background here and you can see my grid, I have it showing. This is what we're talking about. These little dashed lines in there, that's a quarter of an inch. And so you've got a really nice backdrop in there, a visual backdrop to help you place things. The other thing we're going to do is your grid horizontal. We're going to put that at four and four. So the darker purple lines right here, that is one inch. So that's the one thing that we want to do. And then I'm going to go ahead and close that. So the first thing that you'll want to do is you're going to verify those grid settings and then make sure that your grid is turned on. So once again, I right click on that ruler bar and I come down and I do a show grid. Next. We're going to work with artwork. So I'm going to come up to my artwork tool, and it looks like a file folder or a book it's called Custom Shapes, and it has a little starburst, a yellow starburst on it. You're going to left click on that, and when you do, your Custom Shapes library opens up. Now, this is a library of vector art, and for the sake of this month's lesson, we're going to use a rounded rectangle. But I encourage you. Once you put the project together, you can make a mug rug in any shape. It doesn't have to be a rectangle. We're going to do that for the lesson. But as you scroll down through this library of custom shapes, you could use probably 75% of these to create a mug rug. For instance, this butterfly shape would make a really cute mug rug. And you do the lesson the same exact way that we're going to do it, only substitute the butterfly for the rectangle that we're going to use. You've got a cat shape, cookie jars. I mean, anything in here will work. The flourish is not going to work very well because you've got to have some place to put the cup. But when you look at this, you've got a lot of possibilities in there. These are alphabetized. We're going to scroll down to the R, and we're going to use the round box. So once you find the round box, you're going to left click on it, and it's going to bring it in. Now, this is artwork. We're going to now resize this artwork. So we brought in our custom shape as artwork, and we're going to uh, resize it. I've got two tabs in my properties box with artwork to use. I've got what's called the artwork tab, and when it's activated, I can uh, deselect the fill. So currently it's got a fill in there. I can deselect that and click on apply. My artwork shape is still there. This does not change anything that we do in the project, except that you don't see the big purple area or whatever fill color it is. To turn that fill back on, I just click on that and bring it back in. Now, for the project today, I did go ahead and I did uh, deselect that and turn the fill off. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to come over to the Transform tab. Verify that your artwork is still selected. If by some chance you click off of that artwork, then what you're going to find is in the properties box, nothing is displayed. So you'll need to come back and either click directly on the artwork on the page, or you can click on that in the sequence view. We're going to go to the Transform tab, and this is the tab that we're going to use to resize this project. What I did as I was designing the project is I created a project that could be completed in a normal size medium hoop on your regular embroidery machine. Now, if you have one of the new machines that has the mega hoops or the large oversized hoops that are about the size of a dinner table, great. You can make your mug rug bigger. Make it as large or as small as you want. But as I designed the project, my whole intention was I wanted to be able to, number one, use the smallest amount of fabric possible. Number two, get it into a average size hoop. So this will fit into, I think, probably about a five by seven hoop, which is about a medium sized hoop for most of our machines. And I think most of the machines that everyone has, this will fit into your hoop perfectly. So we're going to resize it. And the width, for the width, and you may adjust this. This is entirely up to you. Come over to your properties box, though. Deselect the maintain aspect ratio, okay? Because we're going to make this a rectangle. And if I leave that box checked, then if I update the width or the height, 
it's going to automatically change the other. So by deselecting that, I can come in under my width, and the width that I came up with, and I, I tried this out, it's trial and error in my machine, I came up with six and a half for the width, and I came up with four and a half, 4.5 for the height. So once I input those dimensions, I'm gonna click on apply. So I've got my rectangle. As I said, feel free to make this larger or smaller to fit in your hoop um, or for your machine. So uh, you can definitely make it larger. Okay, so we've got our artwork. You wanna make sure that it's centered. With that selected, I, all I have to do is come up here under my Align tool and click on the center. And what it will do is if I've inadvertently moved it, it's going to bring it back and it's going to align the center right here on the zero vertical and the zero horizontal axis. Now, we're going to use two different tools at this next point in the project. And one of the tools we're going to use is down here on this bottom toolbar. This is called your Stitch Effects toolbar. And with this toolbar down here on the bottom of your screen, you can convert artwork into embroidery stitches, or you can take embroidery and change it. So this is a piece of artwork. If I come over to my sequence view window, it says artwork. And I'm going to turn this into a running stitch. And this is very easy. We've done it before. We come down to this first uh, icon right there, and we left click on that. And now this is Stitches. How do I know that? Let me turn on 3D. Uh, you can see that it, it uh, depicts it as stitches in there. And if I come over to my sequence view window, it tells me it's now a run and I've got a stitch icon right there. Okay. So we've done that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to, this is going to be our placement stitch. We're going to now, when we do this, we're going to, our mug rug is going to have two fabrics in it. And we're going to have a finished seam on those fabrics. So I started off with two different colors. You can expand the project. Maybe you want to make yours three colors, four colors, five, however many you want. But this is how you'll do it. We're now going to come up to the top of our screen, and we're going to use our Run Stitch tool. This tool, I'm going to left click on it. I'm going to come down, and now I'm going to use my grid. So here's my center, and I made several of these mug rugs, and I, the first one that I made, I divided it in half right here, and it just didn't look right. So we're going to, to give it more visual, um, I, I don't know how to call it, but to give it more visual, it's aesthetically pleasing, we're going to offset that. So this side's going to be smaller than this side. I'm going to move over a half an inch, so I'm at a negative 0 0.5. I'm going to left click. I'm going to release my mouse, and I'm going to drag down. Now, I do have the toolkit turned on, and so I know that this is four and a half inches. So when I get down to length four and a half, right there, and I can resize that, I'm going to left click. Okay. And of course, I could come over here. Once you do that, you've got to right click to finish the stitch. I want to use my magnifying glass. I'm going to zoom in. Okay, and what I'm looking for now is, does this stitch line intersect this one? And that's exactly what I want. I'm going to use my hand tool, my pan tool. I'm just going to drag down and pan down and verify that this intersects. I do see a problem, though. It's not on the line, and that's not going to work for me. So I'm just going to real quickly select that and drag it over. I'm using my grid in the backdrop. There you go. Okay, so that's the first thing that we're going to do. Let's change the color. And we don't really necessarily need to do this, but when we change the color, I'm not going to change the color in my machine. But by changing the color in the software, I'm adding a machine command for my machine to stop. So come down with that selected and select any color chip. It doesn't make any difference. The only thing that we want to do is we want these to be two separate colors. Now, with that, diag uh, with that line selected, we're going to copy it. We're going to come up to our, this is cut, copy and paste. With that selected, we're going to click on Copy, and then we're going to click on Paste. Okay, it's going to paste 
an exact duplicate of that original line and we're going to real quickly change the color. As I said, changing the color forces a, a, a machine command to stop and cut the thread. So I've got three items right now. I've got my first rectangle. I've got my first uh, line and my second line. Okay. So the way that this is going to stitch out is I'm going to put a piece of embroidery batting down. I'm going to stitch around the embroidery batting, and then I'm going to trim the outside. Then it's going to stitch a placement line for me to put my first piece of fabric onto. I'll lay my fabric down, then it's going to come back. It's going to stitch that fabric down so I can flip it over. Okay, looking really good. Now we're ready for our second piece of fabric. So with that original stitch still selected, we're going to paste again. You don't need to copy again because that remains in the memory of your computer until you select something else. So you'll see right there, I pasted it. It's directly on top. I'm going to change the color. And then we're going to slide this over about an eighth of an inch. And as I was putting the project together, what I determined, originally I was putting it just on the same place. And what I discovered was that if I flip this over just about an eighth of an inch, it accommodated the bulk of the fabric and made the mug rug lay flatter. So now we're going to move that over. With this selected, instead of clicking and dragging with my mouse, I'm going to use my keyboard command. I'm going to hold down my control key, and now I'm going to use my arrow. And I'm going to, this is what's called nudging, and I'm going to nudge over about an eighth of an inch. And once again, I'm using my grid. I've got my grid set to quarter of an inch, so half of that's going to be an eighth. And so once I get it to about an eighth, I'm going to let go. Okay, good. We're done with that part right there. The next thing we're ready to do is we're ready to add our design. We're going to come over to our library panel. We're going to left click on it. We're going to navigate down to Free FTCU Project. You want to make sure you click the plus sign next to Free FTCU Project. Once you do, you'll see all of the months. You're going to go all the way down to September. You'll see it has a plus sign, so click on the plus sign and select, which means uh, you want to click directly on the word September of 2017. Once you do that, we can come over to our design panel. We're going to left click on that teacup. We're going to hold our mouse down. We're going to drag it over. And we're going to drop it right onto the left hand, uh, to the right hand side of our mug rug. Now it's a little big for this particular project. I'm going to resize it. Normally, I would use my transform tab, but this is a beautiful design. It, it can resize very, very nicely because of the type of stitches that are in there, running stitches and some, a fill stitch in the middle. So instead of uh, using my transform tab, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab one of the corners. When you resize an embroidery design, make sure that you always resize from one of the four corners. If you resize, from the middle here, it does what's called skewing that. Now, you may want to skew it. You may decide, hey, that looks better. That's up to you. I'm just going to do an undo, but when we resize, we grab from the corner. And all I'm doing right now, and this is a, your project, so you can determine that, I'm just going to drag that cup over until it fits in the right-hand side of the, the rectangle. Now, I kind of got a little... Um, took a little bit of uh, design freedom with my project, and I decided that there needed to be steam rising out of the cup. I don't know if this is a teacup or a coffee cup. I'm a coffee drinker. But um, I did put some steam in there. If you want to do that, it's easy to do. You come back up to your run stitch tool. You left click. I come down. I left click. I drag up. I'm going to hold down my control key to create a curve. I'm just going to curve it around until I've got a little bit of steam coming out the way that I like it. I'm going to do another steam. Right click. And let's have one going the other way. And we'll just control around the corner now. Okay, now I've got some steam coming out of my cup. 
if you choose to do this, this is great. You can add anything to it. You can put initials in here. Uh, I thought this would be kind of fun to come down into the hearts right here and to do uh, uh, first initial, last initial, middle initial, or do something like that. I thought that would be kind of fun. But um, as I stitch this out, there's a problem. I added the seam coming out of there after the cup stitches out. So what's going to happen is, is that this is going to stitch. Let's just do a real quick slow redraw. When you create in the software, this is your most valuable tool. You always want to do a slow redraw or a simulate sewing to see what's going on. But I'm coming here, and what you're going to see right now, there goes my steam. And it's going to lay on top of the coffee mug. And the steam should be coming from the inside of the mug, not the outside of the mug. So all I need to do, I'm going to grab that seam. So I've used my shift key to select those three run stitches. I'm going to change the color, and uh, let's get a brown. So I'm going to go to my uh, find tool and type in brown. Okay, there we go. I'm going to click find. There's brown stone. I'm just going to make it brown, and then. I wanted to uh, to stitch before the coffee cup or the tea cup. So I'm just going to click on that. I'm going to drag it up right here. And so what will happen now, let me collapse all of this stuff so we can see this and kind of visually uh, walk through it. And I do this as I'm designing. I really do have to. It's a, it's a, there's definitely a lot of problem solving and analysis that goes through um, creating a design like this. So you can really appreciate people that design for a living. Um, so as it as it stitches out, so this is my uh, putting my fabric down. This is the first part of the cup. Then this is going to stitch out. Great, it's going to stitch out before the cup, and the cup will stitch out. And so now the steam is coming from the inside of the cup instead of the outside of the cup. So that's how you can do that. So I'll just delete that because we'll leave it uh, plain. All right. Now the next thing we're going to do we're going to go through and we're going to create our words to come over here in the um, to fill the left hand side of our mug rug. This is like what I think is really fun. So we're going to use wordplay. I don't know if you've ever looked at this tool before, but it is a diagonal and when you hover over it, it says wordplay. I'm going to left click on it and I want you, before you do this, look at the dimensions of this box. So this box I know is four and a half inches high, and it is, I think, uh, let me just measure real quickly. I can use my grid. There you go, 2.65. Okay, I'm going to remember that in my head. I'm coming to wordplay. Now, wordplay is really fun because what you're going to do is you start with a shape, and there's a library of shapes. If I go to the drop down here, you'll see I have all of these different kinds of shapes that I can use. So experiment play with them. What we're going to do today, though, is we're going to use the rounded box right there. We're going to change the width and the height to match, let me drag this over, this rectangle area right there. And if you remember what I said was it was the height was four and a half. The uh, width, I think I said 2.5. Okay. All right. So that's going to give us this area right there. We don't want to fill the whole area. All we want to do is we want to fill this area right here with words. Now, I've got my shape. What we're going to do now is you're going to come over into this box on the right-hand side called text. So by default, it has word and play built in there. I'm going to highlight my cursor over the top of that. And I'm going to type in my own words. And you can put in as many, you know, I think the more words you put in, the more diverse results you get. So feel free to expand on that. But what I put in was time. And I'm going to use a comma to separate these. Four, comma, T. And that way, when this tool generates whatever mathematical formula it uses to generate the words and splash them around in this space, it will view each of these words as an individual word. Okay, so I'm going to do time for tea. You can add more words in there. Maybe you want to put in types of tea. So I went ahead and I added white, green. I had to look this up on the internet. I didn't know what 
types. I only knew um, green tea and um, breakfast tea. So um, there's Darjeeling. And, oh, once upon a time I had Ruibet. I was on a health kick. So you could go through and you could add all of those different types of um, teas in there. Then you're going to choose a font. So I'm going to, and you can alter this after the fact. This is not going to um, control the end of your project, but you just want to come in and choose a basic font. So I like to choose a font that has an O in front of it as a font for options. So I could do a Cupid. I could do a Daniel. I mean, and you can actually use any font you want, but I'll go with Cupid. Hey, Kathy. And, yes. I just wanted to point out before you generate it, the height and the width, you forgot to uncheck uh -huh. maintain aspect ratio. So you oh, have 2.5 by 2.5. Just oh my God. that oh, would have uh, <laughs> not gone as planned. So just wanted to point that out. Oh, but I can fix it up. Okay, thank you, DJ. I appreciate, mm -hmm. appreciate that. Keep, keep an eye on me, okay? <laughs> okay, so um, I've got, thank you for pointing that out. Okay, so I've got my font selected. Now, down here, I don't usually do anything with the height because the, the tool is going to change the height of the words anyway. Um, but I do change the number of paths. This is the default, 200 paths. And that means it's going to try to put 200, I think, this is the way I interpret it, try to put 200 of these little words in there, which it's just too many. So I'm going to change that to 50, and then maximum color. I don't like to change color, so you can leave it at 15. I don't think it makes any difference. I'm going to put it at 5. Now, I'm going to just check how this is looking. So down here, there's a tool called Generate. And I'm going to click on that, and what it's going to do, and depending on your computer, this may take more time or less time. And it's also how many words you put in and what the size is. But it's doing its magic, what I love about this tool, and it's going to take the words that I put in the box, and it's going to splash them around in this little space. And so now I can see the results. Hmm, okay. Now, every time you click on Generate, it will flash the words around in a different format. And so if you don't like what you see, you can come in here and you can click on Generate Again. I also found that, and I like to play. How do I know a tool, how a tool works? I just get in there and play with it. I also came in and changed the number of tabs. So I went up and down. So it's like now I've got 40 in there. And it doesn't look like it's quite as many. So once I got it where I wanted it, and also under the angle here, you have a lot of options. I can come in under horizontal, and it'll take the words, and they'll all be horizontal. And maybe that's what you want. Or maybe you want just horizontal and vertical. So every time you generate it, and based on what you have selected here, it's going to give you different results. So I just, and I could spend hours sitting here doing this. I guess I should do other things like clean my house, but that would be work. Once you get something that you like, you're going to go ahead and click on Generate. I'm going to grab my hand here, get my hand tool, my Select tool, and I drag it over to fill up that space there. All right. Now, I'm not done. Um, one of the things that I found was, um, and, and I'll just kind of real quickly go through this. I'm going to scroll out a little bit. and. I found that this was still too many words for me, and I also wanted to change the font. So by default, all of the words come in at the same font. You have the ability to change those. So I came in. I would select by the color in the sequence view window. Once I had that color selected, I just drag it over here to the side. And I came in, and I said, okay, let's put those over here. And I know this is a little crazy, but I actually went and took most of the words out. And then I started putting them in individually. Because what I wanted was, and let me get those out of there. I wanted in to so that you could really see it. I wanted it to say time for tea. So once I got those out of there, I found a time. And I brought it over. 
put it in the center there. And as I said, if you want to change the font, while that's selected, come over under your font. You can come in here and you can choose any type of a font and you can update that. So you can really give this um, a very um, diverse look. So let me just do an undo. Let's go time four. We need a four in the middle. And then here's a T that's nice and big, and I'll just rotate that around. And I want to make sure it's really straight. I'm going to, there's, I got a little word there. I think I duplicated that by accident, so be careful as you're going through this process because uh, as I was stitching it out, I actually had duplicated a, a word in there, and when I was stitching it out, it stitched over one of the words twice, and I'm thinking, what the heck is going on? And I opened it back up in the software and saw that I had clicked on the duplicate tool down here on the corner, and it duplicated the word, and uh, the word was sitting on top of it each other, and it did stitch out twice. Okay, let's grab those. Let's make the time come up here to the top. And the T closer to the bottom. And then we're going to select those three words. So I select the time. I hold down my shift key, excuse me, my control key. I grab four and I grab T. I'm going to align those in the center. Okay. And I might have to bump them over just a little bit. And I'm using my control arrows. And then I'm also going to use this tool right here. And what that does is distributes those. Okay. So now that I've got my time for T in there, then I just randomly came back in and started putting the words back in. So I would put in the, the different types of T in there. So ruibus and green. And if I decided there were not, not enough of you know, maybe I put in oolong and it didn't come up very much. And so I could, I would grab like this green and it's like, okay, let's just make that an oolong. Ooh, oolong. So I went through the process of just kind of redistributing the word um, so that weren't too many and the there was a, a good, you know, variety of the different types of words in there and everything like that. And then once I got this looking the way that I wanted, and I won't go through the whole process just because I don't think we have quite the time within the uh, the webinar. Um, let me get, get rid of those. And so, um, but once I got done with that, then I took all the excess words that were out here in that I didn't use, and I just deleted them. So I'm using my select tool. I'm just going to drag around those. Once I have them selected, I press my delete key. I'm going to come down. Let's grab all of these over here. So I'm, this is a bounding box. I'm just bounding that whole area in there. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to show you one thing that you want to do. Once I got the words deleted, I came up. And I did a two fit because what I had discovered, do you see there was a word, T, hidden down here where I couldn't see it. And so if I didn't catch that, if I was working on this area right here on the project and I didn't see that, when I went to save the design, I, this is by, um, by experience. Ask me how I, why I mentioned this because this is what I did. So I got my design all done, I saved it, I took it over to my machine, I put my hoop in there, I got everything loaded up, and it said it didn't fit in the hoop. And I'm thinking, well, what the heck? Why doesn't that fit in the hoop? And when I brought it back into the software, I discovered that I had this random word floating out in the middle of netterware. So what I discovered is, is that if you do a two-fit, then what it's going to do is it's going to look at everything that's in the design space and it will fit that in there. And so if you've got a word floating out there somewhere, it'll incorporate that in there, and then you can kind of see it. Okay. Um, let's get rid of this little uh, rectangle right there. That's artwork. We don't need it. And so I'm just going to delete that out of there also. You don't have to. It's not really a big deal, but 
I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it because it's kind of in the way. So I've got my words in there. I've got my cup of tea. Everything looks the way that I want. Now, yes, I went through this a little bit quickly. So what's going to happen when we get to our machine is that um, this is going, it's going to stitch out the design. And then this is an in-the-hoop project. So I wanted to do everything in the hoop. And when I took it out of the hoop of my machine, I wanted to cut the stabilizer away, and I wanted it to be done and ready to use. So you have to come up with a way to finish the outside here. And I wanted a nice finished edge, and I just thought, why not a satin stitch? And to make it easy, I thought, hmm, I'll just use applique because I need a piece of fabric on the back of my hoop. We'll go through this when we're putting the project together. But I need a piece of fabric on the back, and I need something to hold that together. So we're going to use our original rectangle shape right here. We're not going to recreate that. We're going to come right back up to the very first rectangle. I'm going to left-click on it. I'm going to select it. I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it. Okay. And when you paste it, it will be the very last item down here. And to turn it into applique, we're going to come back to our Stitch FX toolbar, and we're going to click on applique. Okay. So now that's applique. I stitched out the first project this exact way, and I thought, hmm, what I discovered was that I had some little, um, little fuzzy beard type pieces of fabric that were hanging out, and I didn't like that effect. So through trial and error, what I discovered was this. Take the width of your satin stitch, and by default, that applique width comes in as a three millimeter, and make it a little bit fat. And I found that five millimeter width was really good. So I upped that to five millimeter in width. Don't think I changed the density. I'm just going to double check. No, I didn't do that. But I did change the applique instead. And I'm going to grab my magnifying glass. I'm going to zoom in to demonstrate or to illustrate for you what that applique inset will do. So what's going to happen is, is that if I'm stitching this out and I come to that last part that's the applique right here, okay, um, before that cover stitch comes on there, it's going to uh, put down a stitch that will allow me to cut the fabric away off of the back. So by uh, changing the inset of that, bump that up a bit, and we'll make it 60, apply, okay? It just moves that over to the inside a little bit, and it grabs that fabric so that I didn't have the fabric coming out of the inside. So that's why I did that one. And you may have to experience, experiment. And this is based on the fabric that you use. I found that um, fatigue teak fabric, a nice tight woven uh, cotton fabric, worked a little bit better and I had less fraying. I did have some cotton fabrics that had a, a looser weave on them, and I found that when I used those, I definitely had more of those little pieces of fabric that were kind of hanging out. So it's entirely up to you, but that's why I did it. Um, we do want to leave it as sewing the placement, the tack down, and that finishing stitch. Okay, so this is pretty much how I put the project together. I encourage you as you go through, let me go to fit, to experiment, to modify. If you want to add a different design, then I encourage you to do that. Uh, let's just line that up just a little bit better because I've got that size in there. Um, so modify this the way that you want to. I even went around and added stippling around the outside of the tea mug in there. And if you go back to, um, I think it's December, December of 2016, we did a table runner. And in that lesson, and Kathy Quinn also has a video on the um, weekly videos on how to do this to add stippling around an embroidery design. So if you want to know how to, I did that, go back and view that video. I did not include it in the lesson, but if you wanted to add stippling, you could do that. That's just an, an optional. It's entirely up to you. These words over here will actually take the place of um, 
the the quilting in there. So and the embroidery design will take place. So this is actually going to look really really nice. But if you wanted to add stippling, you could. Okay. So I've got my design ready to go. I'm going to send it to my machine. No. Before I do that, and I encourage you to always do that, use your, number one, your slow redraw. So this is your scrub bar. I'm going to left click on that, and I'm going to drag, and I'm going to watch how this is going to stitch out because this is how it's going to stitch out at the machine. And you will find that a lot of times you can catch a mistake here in the software by using your slow redraw or you've got this tool right here and this is called simulate sewing and when you do the simulate sewing when you click on that I'm just going to speed it up what it will do is it's going to simulate the way this is going to stitch out it's got all the machine commands in there for you and so uh, you can really learn a lot about the design and when you're creating something like this this is the most important thing you can do also when you get it over to your machine, make a sample first because uh, a lot of times you miss a step or you add something or like when I put the steam coming out of the coffee cup, you know, you can catch little things like that. So always do a sample test stitch out. And the nice thing about this project is that from start to finish at your machine, this probably doesn't take more than more than an hour, and that's for stitching out the design, doing the fabric, doing the, the words over here, everything. So it really is a very fast project for you to do. Once you've got it ready to go, we're going to send it to our machine. Um, we went through this before, but I'll real quickly do a, a reminder of this. If you come under your preferences, under your first tool right here, the format, you can come in and you can set the software for a default based format based on the machine that you're stitching on. So it might be EXP, might be DST. Um, but you can set that default and then select this box right here for auto save to WAF. I love this feature because now when I'm done with the design and I save it, I'm just going to come up, I'm going to do a file save. I'm going to uh, navigate to my, my flash drive that I'm going to save my design on and I'm going to save it with a name. Uh, but it, the, the software now will automatically not only save it in my machine format, which is PES or EXP or DST, but it also saves it in my software format, which is a WAS. So if I close this design and go over to my machine and stitch it out and discover I've, ma I've made some horrible mistakes like I, maybe I spelled a word wrong in there, and I've done that one before. Um, you can go back and you can open up that WAS file, and you can make those changes to it. So it's real important that you save it as a WAS for that reason. And I love that feature that it will automatically save it for you because now I don't have to do a file save and a file save as because I don't know why I'm kind of lazy. A lot of times I would go, oh, there's nothing wrong with this design, and I'd save it for my machine, and I'd close my software, and I'd be stitching out the design, and guess what? I had made some kind of a big mistake in there, and then I had to go back and kind of start from scratch and recreate it. Okay, so I've got this ready to go, um, and as I said, you can modify it the way that you want. You can make it larger. You can make it smaller. If you decide that you want to do a mug rug with a traditional quilt binding, so I'm going to make a binding and quilt it on the outside, which is nice, um, you could, instead of turning this into applique, uh, just you could go back into your applique down here, and you wouldn't have to do the applique. Just do a copy and paste to stitch it down. or we have the ability in um, the Floriani software to come right here. I could deselect that show fin uh, so finish, and then it's not going to stitch that down in there. That everything else in there. That's another feature I love about applique in the Floriani software. Okay, so I'm done in the software. I'm going to go back over to the uh, software lesson, and we'll just talk about putting this together in the machine. Because if you've never done an in the hoop project, there are a lot of steps to it. They're fun to do, but there are a lot of steps. And so sometimes it's a little confusing, especially if you're new to this. It's like, well, what am I supposed to do now? Or I worked at an event a couple of weeks ago, and we were doing a project in the hoop, and you had to take the hoop off, and you had to cut the fabric. And I can't tell you how many people 
unhoop the fabric when they've got ready to cut it. And once you unhoop your fabric, you'll never get it in there the right way. You might as well take it and throw it away and start over. Okay. All right. So to find your handout, go to uh, the C drive of your computer. So this is on your computer. Make sure that you download the September free design. You're going to um, navigate to your C drive. You're going to, once you uh, navigate to that, you'll find a folder titled Floriani. Open that Floriani folder. There's another folder called Design. Open your Design folder. In there, there's a folder called Free FTCU Project. That's also where you find your free monthly design. Open the Free FTCU Project. Find the September and the September of 2017. Open that folder and right here, find the Rug Mug Mania PDF file. You're going to double click on that. It will open it up and then you're going to send that to the printer. And I do design these handouts so that if you print them front and back, you use half as much paper. And I'm all about saving paper. So you might want to do that. Um, there is a little additional handout. This is what it looks like. And it's the assembly directions. And I put this together because it's just kind of a little checklist. So you could print this off. You could keep it by your machine. And it's it's just going to walk you step by step through what you have to do. And so you can do this step and then put a little check mark by it. And do this step and put a little check mark by it. So this will keep you on track and it walks you through. On color one, do this. For instance, on color one, stitch color one, set the uh, cutting line for the um, batting. You take the hoop off. You trim the batting, and you do not unhoop the stabilizer. So that might help you, as you, especially if you're new to this project. Step one, prepare your fabric. I cannot tell you how much better results you will get, you will get by preparing your fabric ahead of time. You're going to fuse Dreamweave Ultra to the back of the fabric. This uh, will it, it, it increases the thread count, and you're definitely going to achieve better results. And so I know this is just a fast, quick project, but it really does give you uh, different results. And I'll show you the picture as proof in a minute. Your stabilizer. You're going to use Floriani Wet and Gone Stabilizer. Use two layers of that to support the stitches. It's going to it's water soluble. It'll wash away. But we're not doing freestanding lace or anything. So you definitely need to put two layers of the wet and gone in there just to help support the stitches. Now, you could use, and I didn't include this anywhere in there, but you could use Floriani Nylon Notional Mesh in the hoop. And if you do that, when you get to the end, you're going to cut it away. The problem with the Nylon Notional Mesh is that when you cut it away, you have a risk of either cutting the thread or the nylon no show mesh showing through. You could also use your Floriani um, heat tool to just burn that away. So that's up to you. That one would work also. But I think the, the wet and gone stabilizer works the best. You're going to use Floriani embroidery batting in the hoop. You could use different batting, but the embroidery batting actually has, we're using wet and gone stabilizer. The Floriani embroidery batting has stabilizer embedded into it. And so as we're doing this embroidery, that Floriani embroidery batting actually acts as a stabilizer to help support the stitches in this design. So you will get better results if you use the um, embroidery batting. When you, after you stitch color one, you'll see that right here. So this is a piece of embroidery batting. And you don't need a, you don't need to fill the hoop with it. You just need a piece that's a little bit larger than the size of your finished mug rug. Stitch color one. Trim away the batting from the outside. These are the new Quilter Select Wave applique scissors. I don't know if you've picked these up yet. I love them. They have a very fine tip right here. This bill is a little bit smaller, but this tip is what is just spectacular about it because that tip is where you cut and it really allows you to get in there and get really close to the cutting line. So you'll carefully trim the batting. Then you're going to take your hoop and put it back on the machine. It'll stitch the second color. 
and that's going to be this line right here, and that's a fabric placement line. So we're using two pieces of fabric. You're going to lay your fabric wrong side up, and this is Dreamweave Ultra fused to the back of this black fabric. You're going to lay the fabric down. You're going to stitch that next color right there, and then you'll fold the fabric back over the top. And I did a little trimming right there, so I didn't have as much seam belt. Fold the fabric over. Use a piece of embroidery protection tape to hold it down. Put it. Uh, don't put it back in the machine yet. Add your other piece of fabric. So uh, this is my second piece of fabric. I'm going to lay it right over the top of the first piece. And uh, once again, wrong side up. Put it back in your machine. It's going to stitch right there along the top. And then you're going to have this beautiful finished seam in your mug rack. All in the hoop. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you, Judy Friedenberg, for teaching me that technique. Okay, next thing we're going to do, uh, it'll uh, do another stitch around the outside, and that's just a trim stitch for you to go around and trim the outside of the fabric. Then you're going to stitch out your teacup. You're going to stitch out your word play on there. Looking pretty good. Once you get the embroidery done, the design, the words and the teacup, you're not going to unhoop it yet. You're going to uh, take and place a piece of fabric on the back of the hoop. And you're going to lay the fabric on there. You're going to tape it down, take it back to the machine, and stitch that down. Then you remove the hoop off of the machine, and you're going to cut and trim around the outside there. At this point in time, before you go to that applique stitch, this is where I recommend that you put in a 90 um, machine needle. And what I found was right where the seam is on the wrong side there, as I was doing the, the finishing stitch, the, um, the applique stitch, when it got to that bulk in there, I don't know what happened. I slowed the machine down, but I broke a couple of needles. And so I thought, ah, oh, it's the bulk of that seam. So I switched to the 9011 um, machine, I mean needle, and, and that compensated for the bulk in there. Then uh, also, before you do that finishing stitch, you need to do this. Change your bobbin thread. You want your bobbin thread to match your finishing thread. Um, I normally, I use either, a, you know, just a random white thread for my embroidery or a black thread if it's a dark fabric. But this is the one time where you want to make sure that you match your bobbin thread to the top in there. And notice that I used black on the back because then I used black on the finishing and it covered everything up really nicely. And this is just a little tip. You may need to raise your foot height. This is another problem that I ran into is that when it hit the bulk, once I'd added the fabric and the batting and um, all of those other things, when it hit that seam there, the foot, I had it down all the way and it kind of hung up on that. So I found that if I raised the foot at this step, I got better results. Okay, so once you've done these things right there, and this is in your handout, then place that back in and do your tack down and your finishing in there. So it's all done. Trim away the excess stabilizer. This is a water-soluble stabilizer. Take a Q-tip. Dampen the Q-tip in some water and then just run it along the outside right here and it'll just remove any of that excess stabilizer that you have in there and let it dry and you're ready to go. It's perfect. Okay. Go crazy. I think you'll find that this, this really is a lot of fun. You can modify the project. Um, for instance, you can use designs that are in your machine. So uh, this is just the standard mug rug pattern. So instead of doing the teacup, I just grab the design from the machine and stitch that on there. All of those free designs that you download every month, you get five free designs every month. What on earth are you going to do with them? Oh, put them on a mug rug. They're perfect for that. This is a little applique pumpkin, and this was in um, a free design in August of 2015. And so I, and um, by the way, when you look at this picture, you see the puckers in there? This was the mug rug where I did not put Dreamweave Ultra on the back of the fabric. I thought, oh, I don't need to put it on there. And you'll see what happened. As soon as I um, took it out and pressed it, this is what I got. I, instead of uh, doing the wordplay over there, I just added one of those pretty stitches out of the machine. 
Um, you can do anything in there. This is just the traditional binding in there. So instead of doing the applique finish on there, you could do a traditional binding on there. But that requires hand work, and I don't like to do things by hand. I like to finish things in my machine so that it's fast. Find more inspiration. You can go into Google or a search engine and just type in there. Look, type this word, mug rug inspiration. Believe it or not, I don't know how many pages of things will come up. And if you're using Google as a search engine, there's a little tab right here called images. And when you click on that images tab, it's just going to show you the pictures, everything off of the internet, pictures that apply to um, the words that you type in mug rug inspiration. So that's a really fun way to get inspiration for these. And you'll see there are so many different things you can do to create these mug, mug rugs. The other thing is um, go to Pinterest. You do have to have a membership, but on Pinterest, do the same thing, mug rug inspiration. These things are all over the place. So that's why I called it mug rug mania, because once you get started, the possibilities are endless, and you're going to have so much fun with this project, believe it or not. Share the mug rugs that you make on Facebook. Uh, there's a Floriani Embroidery Group. You can post them up there. If you're on Instagram, you can post them up there. If you post them on Instagram, if you type in the description at Casey Farrell, then it sends a little alert to me that says it was mentioned, and then I can pop it up and I can see what you did. We also use, and these are good for either um, Facebook or uh, anything else, um, they're called hashtags, and these are just words to describe the project that you did. So we do a hashtag, and then you can do September Project, or Floriani Embroidery, or Mug Rug Mania, or Quilting, or I Love Embroidery, or anything you want to put in there for a description in there. So let's get social. I'd love to see what you do with this project. I hope you do something with it, because I really had a lot of fun um, with this one and putting it together. So I'm excited to see what you can come up with. If you have questions about the project, please, I encourage you to email me. I'm Kathy S. at rnkdistributing.com. And I hope that you'll come back next month because we're going to continue our building a project in the hoop. And next month's project is going to be a little more complicated. We're actually going to make a bag in the hoop with a zipper. So come back next month for that project. And until next time, can't wait to hear, see what you do. And DJ, with that, I'm going to turn it back over to you. All right. Thank you, Kathy. And thanks again for another wonderful project and webinar. And we look forward to creating the bag in the hoop next time. So until okay. next time, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Kathy. And we'll see you again.